Sleeping Beauty. And I was just like, oh crap, I mean, like, I might as well, I'm playing it right now, I might as well just study that and do that instead, because I'm expressing my mind. So that's why I chose it. What is the main theme or moral of your story? How do this pictures or the text show this? Show this? Well, uh, let's see, uh, main theme, magic, the fairy tale, happily ever after, true love's kiss, all magic, yeah, whatever. That stuff doesn't exist in real life. I mean, in real life, if you, if you try to make out someone that's died of, like, poison or something, I mean, that, that, that's not going to work. I mean, they're going to die. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. How a picture of text show this? Simple. Um, she, she died. I, I, I killed Sleeping Beauty. How have you changed or subverted the dominant ideology originally supported in your fairy tale? What specific changes did you make to the fairy tale to make this happen? It's far and simple. I, I, I killed the lover, making the true love's kiss and happily ever after actually not true, as I explained in my last question. Who is your target audience? How have you designed your project with this in mind? Target audience is, well, this may sound weird. Well, definitely not kids. I'll say that right now. Definitely not kids. But in my case, this is the, I kind of grew up with gore and violence in my life everywhere around me in movies, life, and other situations, but let's not talk about that. So target audience, maybe mature adults or teenagers who just love people's heads exploding off. Uh, how, let's see, uh, how have you designed your project with this in mind? I, I think you'll know about when you read it. Yeah. Tell me about the choices you made regarding use of text and images. How did you decide when to use text and when to use pictures? Well, it's a comic book. There's always going to be text and pictures. When someone talks, there's going to be text. And when there's something narrative happening, i got to use text to let you know what's happening or not. Or where it is, or is, if it's in the past, the future, what time, next day, next hour, whatever. You get, you get the idea. That's why I use text and pictures. Now you know! What elements of art and design did you use to lead the reader's eye through the story? Well, I use speech bubbles and dialogue, so yeah, you can tell when everyone's talking and stuff. Movement when in some in the in the action scene, when you can tell like who's fighting each other and whatever. Um, repetition, uh, and, uh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Whose point of view is the story told from? How did you show this? Well, I, I kind of showed it in a couple of multiple phases. First, it starts off the narrative just to get the story off. Then you like kind of learn about uh, well, how we're Sleeping Beauty and the, the prince is and what the heck they're doing in their house and whatever. And then you learn about the bad guys. It's whatever event is happening at that time in order, I, I guess is the perspective it's told from. And how I show this, it, it, it's all in the same time order, whatever. How have you framed the images or used the camera angles in your project? I didn't. Well, pretty much it's just told from the perspective of someone who's just standing in front of the people, seeing them talk. It's just like us, if we're seeing two people have a conversation, we're going to be kind of like seeing it from the side. We're not going to see it behind someone's back or behind like a bird's eye view or anything like that. I mean, it's normal stuff. Tell me about your cover, if applicable. Uh, the cover is just premature dead. Yeah, which, it, it just shows that this is going to be a different version of Sleeping Beauty. Tell me about your choices in narrative devices, irony, flashback, foreshadowing, suspense, or 
illusion. Well, irony in him believing that, like, he's going to cha save everyone, and, like, he's the hero, and he's going to do everything, whatever, and, you know, she dies. Uh, suspense, illusion, well, the whole thing was not meant to be taken seriously at all. I guess, because in real life, we already know that she's going to die the whole time. Heck, you can tell by the front cover. Tell me about your chosen settings. How did you create mood in your story? Uh, well, it's set in modern times in a modern city. Uh, how did you create mood in your story? Simple. I showed people's faces. If someone were surprised, they'd be surprised. If someone didn't give a crap, they'd have a normal face. If someone was angry, they'd have an angry face. That's how you indicate mood. That's how you can indicate what someone's feeling or what some of the tensions are. Yeah. How have you engaged sound? It's simple. If there's some sound effect happening, I'll put it there. That's what comic books do. How did you create emotion? Emotion? Simple. I, I draw the emotion on the person's face. That's how you tell what they're feeling. Tell me about your choice of transitions between panels, scenes, or pages. Uh, it'll, the scene will end, and then all of a sudden there'll be a text at the beginning saying somewhere else where the next thing is, well, yeah, like comic books usually do when it's telling you it's someplace else, it'll say it's someplace else, or meanwhile, in the future, in the past, or, yeah. Explain your use of symbols, signs, or archetypes in your story. Symbols, I didn't really use much on purpose, because in real life, uh, symbols don't really mean much. I mean, you could just look at anything in life, and experience, you could just shrug it off. I mean... Let's be honest, we don't know like, what like colors or the way that people look in our lives are like. I mean, there's colors all around us, yet someone that's wearing red in like a fairy tale can mean that they're courageous, they're strong, they're prideful, sexual energy, whatever. But in real life, that person's just wearing red because they had no other thing to wear in their closet or whatever. In real life, the color doesn't matter or anything like that. Well, to some people it may, but let's be honest. It really doesn't. Well, in story types and fairy tales, they do. But this isn't a fairy, trying to be a fairy tale or uh, anything like that. This is this comic is set in real life, and real life colors don't exactly mean that too much to people, or specifically me. And that is why I decide not to put a lot of color into it, or lack of. But on the other hand, when the action scene does happen, you may notice that the only color there is is red. Now, the reason for this is because once people usually open up books or something, they'll flip through it first just to see what it's all about or try to find something that will catch their attention and then look at it. So I knew as soon as someone would open, flip through my pages or open my book, they would notice the action scene. And the action scene, let's say, does stick out a lot. Now, the reason why I made it stick out a lot more is because I added color red, so it even sticks out more. So yeah, archetypes though, uh, let's see, the prince does what he should do, save the princess. Father, king, man, just say, go save her, doesn't, let's be honest, they're pretty useless, they're just kind of there. Uh, now the princess, she is, I made her specifically useless and an idiot in this one, because what I've noticed usually in Disney princess movies or like other renditions of stuff, they're, they're pretty, all they do is look, stand around and look pretty. I mean, I recently just watched the recent Maleficent movie, and all that, like, the Princess Aurora did in that one, let's go, <laughs> I mean, she just falls on a pile of leaves and go, <laughs> I mean, the whole movie is just her going, <laughs> well, that's what it seemed like to me. So, I just kind of made the princess the same one in this one, just useless, she, and then dies, and, yeah. Because that's what I see them like in real life. So, yeah, I'm done. And that is it, my friends. He's done. It's over with. Now we can finally get back to our boring old lives and do whatever. Who cares? Screw y'all.